So the Egyptian gives you the side view of an eye, the, the front view of an eye, the side view of the face, the front view of the chest, the side view of the arms, the side view of the hips, and the side view of the legs. But he's changing everything. Notice the only great toes. Egyptian pharaohs didn't have any little toes. They didn't show you little toes. Those weren't very fashionable. But on the left, we have the golden section intervals that all of this proportion is based on, and it's a canon of squares. Well, there's a canon here, too. Every field is cleared of the stones by the initial farmer, and generally, these fields were about a furlong. A furlong was the amount of work a horse could do in one day. So the landscape has been ordered by the farmer's needs since the beginning of time. Our coded marks for a composer can be read by a performer, by an orchestra, by an interested, educated audience. Football players need a grid. Hmm? There's a grid for Hindu art. Hmm? Leonardo does a measured figure, and he's building it out of two-dimensional figures, triangles, rectangles, truncated triangles. We're going to address a bottle in this class in a moment. It's going to be based on the same kind of thinking. This is a root two rectangle. I showed you the root phi, the phi rather. Now this is a root rectangle, and I will discuss this briefly in a minute. But you see, in the root system, if you have the Baroque diagonal, which is what we're using here, this is the Baroque, and we said that was the sinister. This is the sinister reciprocal, a line that comes from a corner intersecting a major diagonal at exactly 90 degrees, a right angle. You could put a cut piece of paper in here. And where it hits here, you drop a vertical, and when you do, this root two, which is horizontal, breaks down into two root twos, which are smaller and vertical. Now, if I divide this in half, I get four root twos, which are horizontal but smaller. I can continue breaking this down at this point where this hits. These are root twos. These are root twos. <laughs> these are, these are, do you see it? It goes on and on and on, but it gives us a, repeat, a repeated series of diagonals, a limited gamut or series of directions which we will employ if we choose to design in a root two or one of the other root rectangles, which you'll learn about as this course progresses. So here is, and I'm going to mention this, not that you're going to understand it today, but you will later. The dash is the square. So if I take a compass here and I bring it down, it's going to give me a square with its 45 degree angles in that dashed red. And if I bring one down this way, it's going to give me these. Can you see that diamond in red there? Can you see that and this parallel? This is called a St. Andrew's cross. If you swing the short side over onto the longer side, you overlap squares. Most artists use this because the shorter side and its square is an important building block in pure design. The diagonals, this is the Baroque and the sinister. This is the sinister reciprocal. This is a Baroque <coughs> reciprocal. This is a root two on the theme of three. So instead of dividing it here, here, and here, where we did earlier, now we're dividing it into thirds. We got one, two, three, and one, two, three, but they're still root twos. Now, <coughs> This is a painting by a 14-year-old by the name of Pablo Picasso in a Route 3. His father was an art teacher, couldn't keep a job, wasn't very good, was a mediocre painter. The family moved all over the place. The old man had a house full of women to take care of and this spoiled brat, Pablo. But the kid got drawing instruction from a very early age. 13-year-olds don't draw with straight lines. You've got to be trained to formalize everything into straight lines. Nature, remember, has none. So that's a dead giveaway that this kid is very, very heavily trained. 
If we take that diagonal through, it's going to connect with and coincide with that sleeve. It's going to hit his eye. It's going to come up and hit that candlestick. So there's an awful lot going on here that this 14-year-old has mastered. And this will reveal it. This is a root two on the theme of three. And all of the candlesticks are organized on and in this root two. And the candelabra is organized in that root two. And this root two is organizing his sister who's posing as a First Communion girl. This is his father and this is his mother. Not bad for a 14-year-old. But there are no straight lines in nature. And when we look at these reverse curves that occur in nature, we're going to call them arabesques. And we'll add them to the straight lines that we organize everything we do with. In nature, if you draw a plant or a leaf and you're not paying attention to its relationships, it's going to look wrong. You have to bring information to bear. They say only through drawing do you learn how to see. So if you were to follow that reverse curve, you would find that all of them, all of these veins in this leaf flow from a point outside of the leaf. Their commonality and their relationship stems from the outside. Are you able to see what we're talking about a little bit when I keep using the word relationship? Something has to unify a group of elements if they're going to be related to one another. They could be parallel to one another. They could be 90 degrees to another system. They have to be enclosed in arcs. Something has to relate them. In this case, it's a radiating arc.